Jack was a fisherman. He was married to Lisa. Jack and Lisa lived on a cliff near the Great Sea. Every day, Jack used to go to the cliff and hook fishes for a living. He was happy with his humble life, but he knew well that Lisa was not. She was always angry. Look at this filthy hut. The smell makes me sick. I clean it night and day, and it just doesn't work. Jack loved Liza, but she never stopped complaining. On good days when he caught two fishes, Liza asked for three. If he got her mangoes, she would ask for peaches. There was nothing he could do to make her happy. Oh dear, what could I do to make you happy? Get me out of this stinky hut. I will be happy then. One day, Jack went to catch fish near the cliff. The water was calm and blue. He sat there with his fishing hook deep into the sea. A few hours passed by and he grew tired. Guess we will have to live on fruits today. Oh, wait, I feel something. Jack held tightly upon his fishing rod and began to pull. Oh, this is heavy. Must be a big one. As the hook came up, he was surprised to see a flounder. It was colorful and shiny. A flounder? How is it so heavy? Maybe it has eaten too much. No, Jack, that's not why. I weigh more than the other fishes. What? Did you just talk to me? What just happened? How do you know my name? I know a lot more about you. I am not a normal fish. I am an enchanted prince. Let me go. I will not taste good to you anyways. Please don't kill me. Oh, say no more. I will certainly not kill a talking fish. Off you go. Ah, thank you. Jack was excited to tell Liza about the flounder. He rushed home and forgot that he had no fish to give to Liza today. Liza, I have something to tell you. Come fast. What? No fish today? Oh, no, I had caught a flounder, but he told me that he was an enchanted prince. What? What happened then? Then I let him go. He is in the sea now. You caught an enchanted fish and let it go just like that? Why would you do that? We are poor and hungry. We live in this stinky hut. You could have asked for a better house, at least. How can he give me a house? He can't do that. We must be happy with what we have. I will be happy if I live in a cottage. Didn't you say he was an enchanted prince? You spared his life. He can do this much for you. Go back and ask for a cottage. Jack was hesitant, but he went back to the sea. To his surprise, the water had turned a little green and yellow. Magic fish, can you hear me? The flounder came to the surface in no time, as if it was waiting for Jack to come back. My wife is not happy. What does she want? Hey, she wants a cottage. Go back. She already has it. Jack went back and saw that Liza was standing at the wooden door of a beautiful cottage. The cottage was well kept and clean. It had furniture and a fireplace as well. Liza, look. This house is so much bigger and cleaner. Yes, we have a fireplace too. This is nice, isn't it? Are you happy now? Can we live here forever? Hmm, we will see about that. Let's eat and go to bed. That night, Liza didn't sleep well. She kept thinking about what could make her happy. In the morning, she was already waiting for Jack at the dining table. Good morning, Jack. Listen, this house is small for us. I want a palace and I want to be a queen. Go to the flounder and ask him to give us a palace. What? Why do you want to become a queen? This is enough for us. Let me decide that. 
Go to the flounder and make me a queen. Jack hesitantly walked toward the sea. The water was purple today, and the winds were gushing. Magic fish, can you hear me? My wife is not happy. What does she want? She wants a palace, and she wants to become a queen. Go back, she already has it. When Jack went back, the cottage was gone. Instead, there stood a tall palace with big brass doors. There were many servants rushing everywhere. He saw Liza sitting on a throne. She had a crown on her head. You are a queen now. Yes, I am a queen. This is nice, isn't it? Are you happy now? Um, no. Being the queen is not enough. I want to become the emperor. What? I know what you are thinking. The flounder cannot make you the emperor. That's impossible. You don't know that. Go to that fish and make me the emperor. Jack was hesitant, but he went back to the sea. To his surprise, the water had turned a little green and yellow. Magic fish, can you hear me? The flounder came to the surface in no time, as if it was waiting for Jack to come back. My wife is not happy. What does she want? Hey, she wants to become the emperor. Go back. She already has it. When Jack went back, the palace was now grander than before. Inside, Liza sat on a golden throne. All the ministers and kings stood below her throne. She had a golden orb in one hand and a scepter in another. Dear, you really are the emperor now. Yes, I am. Didn't I tell you? The fish could make this happen. Yes, you did. Are you happy? Oh, I don't know. We will see. We have had a long day. We must go to sleep. Jack was scared that Liza would make another demand, but he was tired from running the entire day. He fell into a deep sleep the moment he lied down. But Liza couldn't sleep. She sat up thinking about what could make her happy. A week passed. Every night, Jack prayed to make Liza happy. But every night, Liza sat on the bed looking at the moon and the stars. Finally, one night she grew tired of thinking and wanted to rest. But what is it? Morning already? How dare the sun rose now? Doesn't it know that I haven't slept in a week? Husband, wake up. I want to control the sun and the moon. I don't want them to move without my permission. I want to become the Almighty. What? Please stop this. I can't go back and risk our lives. You won't risk our lives. I will own both our lives. Nothing will ever touch us. Go to the fish and make me the Almighty. Oh dear, you don't know what you're asking for. I can't take this anymore. If you don't leave now, then I will be very upset. You won't risk our lives, Liza insisted adamantly, her eyes flashing with determination. I will own both our lives. Nothing will ever touch us. Go to the fish and make me the Almighty. Oh dear, you don't know what you're asking for, Jack protested, his voice tinged with concern. I can't take this anymore. If you don't leave now, then I will be very upset, very upset. The fisherman wanted nothing more than to see his wife happy, but deep down, he knew that granting such a wish was wrong. Outside, the clouds circled ominously over the sea, and the wind roared with a ferocity that sent shivers down Jack's spine. This is so wrong. Jack muttered to himself, his heart heavy with fear. The weeder. It's so pitch black today. I am really scared. Magic fish, can you hear me? Jack called out desperately, 
his voice echoing across the vast expanse of the sea. My wife is still not happy. What does she want? came the response from the depths below. Yeah, she wants to become the Almighty, Jack confessed, his voice filled with resignation. The fish's reply was swift and unequivocal. Go back, she already has it. With a sense of foreboding weighing heavily upon him, the fisherman sprinted back to shore with all the speed he could muster. But as he reached the familiar shores of his village, his heart sank at the sight before him. His wife was nowhere to be found. Frantically, Jack searched every corner of the village, calling out Liza's name into the wind. But there was no sign of her. In a panic, he raced back to the sea, hoping against hope that the magic fish held the answers he sought. As he approached the water's edge, Jack was greeted by a scene of eerie calm. The clouds had parted, and the sun shone brightly overhead, casting its warm rays upon the tranquil sea. With a trembling voice, Jack pleaded with the magic fish to return his beloved wife. What did you do to my wife? Jack demanded, his voice quavering with emotion. I granted her wish, the fish replied solemnly. She wanted to be the Almighty, the Unknown. That's what she is now. Nobody has ever seen the Almighty. She is now unknown to everyone. Desperation clawed at Jack's heart as he begged the magic fish to undo its cruel handiwork. No, please, give her back to me, he pleaded, his voice choked with tears. I cannot undo a wish. But then, a glimmer of hope flickered in the depths of Jack's despair. Wait, he cried out his voice trembling with newfound resolve. Up till now, I only asked for my wife. You granted all her wishes, but I am the one who saved your life. Grant me my wish. The fish's response was measured, its voice echoing across the sea with a solemn weight. What do you want? Taking a deep breath, Jack spoke with a clarity born of love and longing. I want my wife to be happy. With those words, the fisherman turned and hurried back to his small hut, his heart heavy with uncertainty, yet buoyed by a flicker of hope. And to his astonishment, as he reached the door, he saw his wife standing before him, her eyes filled with a newfound understanding. Oh, you are back, Jack exclaimed, relief flooding through him like a warm embrace. Yes, dear, Liza replied softly, a gentle smile gracing her lips. I have realized that palaces and thrones cannot buy happiness. Let's go home now. And from that day forth, the fisherman and his wife never went hungry for a single day. For Liza had discovered that happiness lies not in riches or power, but in the simplest of things. And together, they lived happily ever after, their hearts filled with a love that no wish could ever diminish.